Hi, good afternoon, brethren. I want to talk about John 3.16, and it's probably the most quoted verse in the entire Bible that I've seen from believers. Most believers can quote John 3.16 without looking at the Bible. And it's one of those well-known verses that many of us are that recognize. And I'm just going to read it. It says, John, John, this is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a beautiful verse. And in fact, I have it in some of my tracks that I've made. I don't have it in every track, but I have it in some of the tracks. But something important to understand about this verse is that there is no blood atonement. Um, this verse does not by, save by itself. There are certain circles of, especially in the hyper grace, uh, guys like Bob Wilkins and Zane Hodges and uh, those of the faithalone.org or the grace gospel. I think Grace Gospel Press, if I remember. They, uh, they've they gone to an extreme. And there's certain hyper-grace guys that just claim that all you need to do is just simply believe in Jesus Christ and you're saved. And that's not, that's not uh, biblical. The Bible teaches us that there's two things that a believer must do to be saved. That is, believe the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then you place your faith in Him and you're saved. Now, while this verse... It's a very beautiful verse. It must be accompanied with the gospel, which is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the good news of what he did for us on the cross. It says, For God so loved the world. So God loved the world so much, and because he loved the world so much, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So those who would believe in Jesus Christ would not perish, but have everlasting life. But something to remember, brethren, is that this verse does not contain the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because it doesn't contain that, it cannot save alone. The verse alone cannot be saved. And I've seen tracts that just simply have this verse, John 3.16, and they think that, person can just get saved by reading that track no you can't just get saved by this track or sorry you can't get saved by this uh, verse this is john three sixteen. so it john is telling us that god because god's loved the world so much he loves mankind he, he gave his only begotten son to the world because of that love it began with love and it began with God. It began with God and of his attribute of love. And because of that reason, he gave his only begotten son. And he promises that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But if you notice, there is no mention of that you must believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, if you go to, um, I'm going to go to Mark 16.15. Another well-known verse. You probably have it by memory. And I have it highlighted here. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, Jesus Christ is telling his apostles to preach the gospel to every creature. And uh, this is already right before he ascended up to heaven. So, this is the gospel. Which gospel? There's different Gospels in the Bible. This is the Gospel of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So this is the Gospel that he told his apostles that they must preach to every creature. And these are not only instructions for the apostles, but if we look in the epistles, they're also instruction for us believers to go into the world to preach the Gospel to every creature. So what is the Gospel? The Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to see that. So I'm going to start in verse 1 up to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, 
by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. Ye have believed in vain. For I believed, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again at the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel. That Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the gospel. The gospel means good news of Jesus Christ. So that is the gospel. Where do we see... And if you notice in John 3.16, there is no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say that whosoever believeth in his death, burial, and resurrection and believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this verse in of itself cannot save. It must be accompanied with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a great verse to use. I have it in some of my tracks, as I said earlier. But in of itself, it does not save. Because if you just say that Jesus Christ, that you need to just believe in Him without believing in His death, burial, and resurrection, you can't be saved that way. Because otherwise, we don't know what Jesus is. The Bible talks about different Jesuses uh, that people are preaching. A false Jesus. You have the Jesus of the New Age that make him look like some sort of Hindu guru um, that's in a, pos a, a position of yoga. And then you have a false Jesus of the Roman Catholics that gets sacrificed every time in the Mass. And then you have the false Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses that remove his deity and uh, ultimately preaching Arianism. So it must be the Jesus of the Bible. And I'm going to go to uh, Ephesians, or first I'm going to go to Romans 3, 6, or sorry, Romans 3, 24 to 26. I'm going to read 24 to 26. It says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the just, might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now, if you notice, he says, Paul says that one must believe through faith in his blood. You must believe in the blood. You must believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. For the righteousness, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So you believe in the blood, and then you believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. Now I'm going to go to Ephesians. I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 1. So Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read 12 and 13. So Ephesians chapter 1, 12, verses 12 and 13. It says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, excuse me, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So Paul is saying that the Ephesians, Ephesians believed in Christ after they had heard the gospel of their salvation, the word of, the word of truth. So after that the Ephesians heard the gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they and they placed their faith in him. They trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior. So you can't be saved just believing in Jesus Christ without believing in his death, burial, and the resurrection. That's so important because you must believe in the blood. Jesus Christ for sin, died for all sinners, all mankind. And therefore, since he died for all of us, People need to believe that he died for their sins, was buried, and that he rose again from the dead. That is a gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, and then he also resurrected from the dead, which is also very important. Now, if you notice back in John 3.16, John 3.16 doesn't mention any of that. It doesn't say that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose from the dead. And it doesn't say that you have to believe that. Now, as 
the verse itself is a great verse. I don't think very many believers understand really the verse itself. It's a very often quoted verse. And usually when verses like this get quoted so often, sometimes believers are quite don't understand what the meaning really of the verse is because it's quoted so often. But the verse in of itself does not save anybody. Because it just says that God loved the world and because he loved mankind so much he gave his only son. Now giving doesn't mean that he it doesn't say that he died for his sins. It just says he gave his only begotten son. Because of God God's love for the world. It's because of his uh, divine attribute, his great love. And that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if you flip over to the epistles, we, we just saw two scriptures from the book of Romans and from Ephesians that tells us that one must believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and then you trust in him as your savior and you're saved. So salvation happens when a person believes in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, believing that he died for them, and then they place their faith in Jesus Christ, and then they're saved. But this verse in of itself does not save. There is no death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a great verse to be used, but it must be accompanied with the gospel, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is his death, burial, and resurrection. If you use this verse, make sure that it's accompanied with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anybody who believes this verse in and of itself and doesn't believe in the blood atonement is not going to be saved. So thank you and God bless.